good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about using the built-in copy function for copy and slices. Previously you saw the make function, uh, the length function, the capacity function, and then we did the append function. So this is the copy function. Um, the nice thing about a copy function is it helps you take care of all those tricky situations that you might have in other languages where you're trying to copy one slice to another and they have different sizes or they might even overlap in which they point to the same underlying um, array. Um, those things are things you have to take care of in other languages or at least be cognizant of in other languages. And so today we're looking at, you know, copy and slices using um, the built-in copy function, okay? And what I want to start with is a function um, that we'd written a uh, while back and basically allows us to print out information about a slice. I'm um, just giving it names so and we can see the capacity and so on easily without having to repeat that information. And so here I want to start with uh, the idea of thinking through what it would mean to copy a slice. Um, so if you look at this, I have this S0 here, and let's just create another slice so we can kind of talk about it. And that would be var, let's call it S1 equals to, okay, let's just say make some slice int um, and three. And if you think about this, what does it really mean to be copying one slice to another? Well, we know from this that these two slices, so if I say copy, S0, S1. So basically what I'm saying is the sources come second, the source parameter. So I'm saying copy the elements from S01 into S0. But it doesn't really matter that there's nothing in there right now except 0. Then maybe that's what we want to do. The important thing is to try thinking through, like, how many elements are in S1 that I need to copy to S0? And as we can see from this, that there are three elements here. And then this one has, you know, whatever, six elements. So when you're copying slices or any type of collection, um, any type of value that allow you to represent multiple compounded set of values, you have to start thinking about the sizes, the size implication of the two things you're trying to copy. And we can say that since there are only three elements here and there are more elements in the destination, that yes, this copy should work. So essentially, I should probably replace these four three elements here with zero because the source has the first three elements of zero and that's all I'm able to copy is three elements from the source. And then if we were to change thing around a little bit and say, well, what does this mean instead? Where I'm copying more elements from the source into the destination. And again, if we think about it, well, the destination only has place for three, so really, all I, I'm going to do is take three from the source, even if the source has more, big deal. And so, again, we see that works fine. And of course, if we can understand how um, to copy slices with different sizes, and we seem to be okay, then certainly slices with the same number of elements should be fine. So if I, I had this instead, um, they're both three, and it doesn't matter which one I copy to or from, the end results was just going to reflect um, whichever one uh, I copy from, but other than that, they both have the same number of elements. So that seems fine. Now you may be thinking, well, why is Varel mentioning this and he spent the past minute talking about this? Is if you've ever programmed in any other language before. If you've never programmed, don't worry about ignore what I'm saying for the next 20 seconds. But if you've programmed in any other language like C, for example, you know that our copying um, an array, for example, you must be able to calculate the size and know exactly how much you're copying from the source and make sure that the destination has enough because you can overwrite things. In Go, that is not a problem. And let's just see that by start off by playing with something. So let's just create a slice. Let's call it um, S for slice and we'll create it with uh, integer and let's do make instead actually. Let's just, just declare it. And so I'm um, saying so S is a slice. And of course, I can print out S, and we know that oh, that's going to be empty, so there's no point in printing that out. But what I want to do is say copy, and I want to copy into S. I'm going to treat S like my destination, for example. And I'm going to say, um, well, you know what? Even better. Let's make this 
DST for destination. So this is my destination and I want to copy some things into it. What do I want to copy? Let's just create a, um, a slice here, um, literal, and so we're going to put some values in it. Or, uh, let's do 7 and 91 for example. And now I want to print out this slice. So let's just print array. Well, I should call this print slice, you know. All right. And so I'm printing out destination and DST. Okay. And so print slice. Okay. And so now if I let that save and then I go here and I run, and I do go run main. And notice how there wasn't any change. Basically, what I'm just showing you, that there wasn't a problem, even though we said copy this slice that has two elements to some destination that is not even valid. It's a nil um, slice, as you can see. Um, Go doesn't give us a runtime exception. Okay, a lot of, again, a lot of other languages, you would have to take care of that. Well, that's nice and dandy, but what about um, if we had, for example, um, in our source, so let's make DST uh, make some space in it, and so we're going to say make a slice of int of one, for example, and let's call this value here. Let's just put it in some variable called source. So we're going to say var src source is equals to um, just s is equals to this, okay? And so now I've created um, a destination that can take one element, and that's the length of it, but I'm going to still try and copy um, from a source that has multiple. So, and again, we should expect, like we discussed, that Golang or this copy function is going to look at the source and say, oh, there are two elements, but my destination can only take one here. And so it's simply just going to copy like the first one because this slice points to this set of um, values. So again, nothing surprising. Very easy to use. The thing you might notice or you should notice is that with a copy, we don't actually return a value. There's no need to return a value. That's because we're saying, I want you to move elements, if possible, from the source, second parameter, to the destination, first parameter. And I still want to maintain the position, location, everything of the underlying area that I'm pointing to. All I'm asking you to do is take the elements, copy the elements, element by element, into the places I'm pointing. So I don't want to change my view into the underlying array in any way whatsoever. So that's why you don't have to return a value because it's the same view you're going to have. All right. So that seems fine. Well, what about um, if we were to make the destination? Well, we already said that the destination could be the same size. What about if the destination was actually bigger, like in, like this source is three and the destination um, is two and the destination is three. Well, what does that do? Well, just as we expect, just copy as much as you can and leave the rest. Now, if we had made this slice without copying, we would see that there, it would say length of three and there would be three zeros, right? Because that's the length of the slice. But since we copy in, well, we just copy home how many we can from the source, even though the destination is bigger. So, so far, you're probably thinking this is really boring, and it is. It's, it's simple to use, and it's straightforward. It does exactly what you expect. All right. And so I hope this is not giving you any trouble, but again, Go makes this copy and slice is very easy. Now, one of the things I want to talk about, though, is something that we sort of, I mentioned a minute ago, which is when you copy in things like collection, which are data structures that allow you to treat a collect number of values, either similar values or dissimilar values as one, I'm going to use the broad term collection to mean slice, array, um, string, maps, which we're going to see in the next chapter. 
Um, of course, you have to take into consideration their relative size, which is the size of the source versus the size of the destination. And we can see that when it comes to slices, Golang manages them very well when the sizes are dissimilar. Um, the slices have these different sizes, so no problem there. Another big issue with copy and collection uh, in other languages is when they overlap. And so in other languages, you have to take care that if you actually try to copy um, a source from a source slice to a destination slice or array, and they actually point to the same thing, that that could be a problem. Let me demonstrate. So I'm going to say that how my slice s is equals to a slice of int that has the value 7, 91, 3, and 59, and 72. Okay? Oh, we know exactly what that's going to look like. So um, let me see. It's good to probably print it out just so we're in the same page. Okay? So we know what that's going to look like. Now, I want to create, from that, I want to create two slices. And I'm going to call, say, source is actually pointed to S um, colon 5. So what it says is my source is pointed to the force 5 element here. Okay? So we can actually, let me put in, uh, should I put in some more values here? Uh, yeah, let's see, 42 is a nice one, 61, whatever. Okay, so 7, 91, 3, 57, 72, that way. So my S0 is pointing to these force elements here. This, 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 this. And it's not pointing to 72. As a matter of fact, let me um, keep it simple by leaving this off. Okay, so I have a 5, my source is 5, but the slice here is just pointing to the first 4. What about my destination? Destination D DSD. Let's um, slice this same array and have it overlap a little bit. And so as you can see that source and destination points to the same underlying array. And of course, we can um, print that out. So let's do that. And I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to say SRC and SRC. Okay. So now, let's print it out. Not, nothing very exciting going on here yet. And so, oh, SRC, undefined. I don't have a variable SRC. Okay. Time to have a variable called SRC. Okay. And I print it out. Again, nothing exciting. So my S has these five elements. And then the source points to these force four. Well, I don't want it to point to the entire thing. Um, I want it to be, blah, 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 where's my source? From zero to five should supposed to be the end, in, um, the one past the end. So why is it that I'm seeing it's pointing to all five? So it's the end of that four. What am I missing here? So zero, one. Oh, of course, I put five, so it's going to point to one past it. Ah, of course, one past it. So the offset is so zero, one, two, three, four. We want source to be from the beginning of the slice, zero to four, and we want destination to be just slightly one after, and basically there's an overlap, of course. You, as you can see, there's a overlap. And if you, let's clear the screen here and run this again. And as you can see, yep, so there's my original slice. I reslice and create another slice for the first four elements. Then another slice that points to uh, these members. Okay. And so the question is then, what happens when we say copy um, to destination from the source? And of course, we're going to want to print it out to see the difference and of course we want to print out the underlying um, array the complete thing to see what changes were made and so let's just run it and then we'll discuss what it remember this is copying source and destination slices that points to the same underlying array and so we run it 
and this is what we get. We get that the result is 77913, so it looked like the um, 59 was removed. And to kind of see what's really happening is if you imagine that this is the slice for destination and this is the slice for the source, well, it's already been modified, but before we did the copy here. So we know that though the destination has three elements, so these three elements must be copied to the destination. And so see where they fall into the underlying thing, we need the illustration. So let's jump over here. And so if you think about um, what's going on, let's say we have a destination. And in our case, the underlying array is 791. That's why I wanted to go back and make sure I look and make sure the code matches up with my illustration. 7913597. That's what we have here. And then we created a destination slice from 1 to 4. So our destination slice is from offset 1 of the underlying array to 3. And of course, 4 is the end. So it's pointing to these three numbers 91, 3, and 57, which we see here for destination. Our source is from the beginning of the underlying slice the first four elements, which is that 7, 9, 1, 3, and 59. And we know that because when we created the source, we said that we want to start from 0 to 4. Okay? So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then offset 4 is here, but that's the last, the end of it. All right. So when we do a copy, essentially what we're saying is we want, remember, destination only have this view, and source has this view. So we want, of course, we can only copy three up to a maximum of three because that's all our destination can hold. So it's going to be these three elements that must move over and be replaced here. And so, as you can see, this would be the end result. The problem that you're probably not seeing yet is depending on how you copy this because they all, both source and destination represent the same underlying, are pointing to the same underlying array, you might actually end up trying to, when you copy, you know, from the view of this array, 7, into location, this location, you've overwritten the 91 that would need to be copied here because you're essentially trying to shift these values over. And so if you don't see yet that depending on how this copy happened, that's why some languages forbid trying to do a copy um, of overlapping arrays because you can end up just having, you know, unintended um, result based on how the copy is done. But in Go, because it has insight into what you're trying to do, it can say, well, oh, what I see is really, you're just really trying to shift this over by one. So essentially, I could copy three here, and that's safe because five is going to go away, 59 is going to go away anyway, then copy nine to one to this location, and then seven to this location, instead of if I had actually tried to copy 7 over first, I would erase the 91. And when I try to find 91 to copy it here, there wouldn't be any 91. I would be copying 7, 7. So the whole thing would be 7. Just trust me, that always could have gone wrong. And that's why some languages forbid it. And so essentially what Go is doing is looking at the two slices and seeing that, oh, they pointed to the same array. And the re end result is really that things are going to be shifted over. And like I said, it does the copy you could imagine something like this. Now, I'm not saying one at a time, but it can figure out an efficient way based on how much it overlaps. In this case, the overlap is just one, and based on the source and destination, that's how it did it. Now, it works the same way if we were to change this around. So we could have said, copy it the other ways, even though this doesn't kind of make any sense right now and with the variable name, but it actually would still work um, correctly. And Again, that is because the GoLang copy function um, understand what's trying to happen. Notice it looked like it shifted, it over, shifted over the other way. And if we were to look at our illustration, we would see that oh, what it's really doing is instead of doing this way, it's actually doing this first, um, you know, the other way. 91 over to seven, over this location, then 3 over here, then 59 over. And so it ended up with... 91357. Again, safe to be able to do copy and source and destination from the same um, uh, underlying 
all right okay uh this video i don't want it to go much longer um i think you see how simple it is to use copy if there's any takeaway is feel free to copy your slices regardless if the points are the same on the line array or not that's the takeaway don't think about the sizes of the from and the to the copy functions take care of it and it's sensible and handles that basic takeaway all right so in terms of exercise um, i can't show you the solution what i'd like you to do is here's a slice of bytes and so i'm using you know a, um, a character ascii character um, but if this doesn't work for you and it doesn't print out what you want um, change it to rune and we haven't covered we, we did mention our very early when we talk about how data is stored and so on and what a rune is but um, if it doesn't work in your language um, local just changes the rune but basically what I'm doing here is I have a slice of bytes and each byte is you know a character representing ASCII character and it essentially spells out hello world with a comma in between and space between hello world and if I scroll over that's essentially what I put in this slice of bytes and your to do is simply to create a variable that represents a slice to the hello world a variable that represents a slice of these bytes that represent world and then do a copy of one to the other and then print out of course i already have the print statement to print it out and so based on how you copy it the end result when you print it out it should be uh, hello comma space hello now if you do it incorrectly you're going to get world comma space world so that tells you that you did it incorrectly so that's all that's the the assignment and the solution of course is provided so thanks again for your time um i know that all this is probably seem pretty simple but you know some people they might never seen it before with the slices and copying and so i had to cover cover it it's part of the language also so um appreciate you taking your time to spend with me spread the word see you in the next video and you know usual if you haven't subscribed please subscribe if you are subscribed thank you let other people know leave comments about anything question improvement whatever problems you see issues whatever i'm open to all of that and take care see you